Hello, Captain Coder here again with another coding challenge walkthrough video thought process. Watch me sweat a little bit as I can't figure out how to program well. Today I'm going to be doing a coding game classic easy puzzle. So for those not aware, Coding Game is a website kind of like Leak Code Hacker Inc. It's a place to practice your programming skills. People submit problems um, and you're able to try and solve them in almost any programming language you want. Uh, so today we're going to do one of the classic easy puzzles. Let's see what we got here. And so I'm just going to do this first one here, Ghost Legs. Uh, ghost legs you come to these the classic puzzles these are under the practice of good activities practice these are the easy not the they're not all easy this is one of the easy ones this is a great place once you've started once you've learned the basics of programming if statements variables loops methods um, arrays this is a great place to come and test your skills if you're not sure what to work on. If you don't have a project, if you just want to practice your skills a little bit, you can come here and find it. Find different problems to solve. There's lots of websites like this. I like Code and Game. I like Leak Code, Hacker Inc. I've done a lot on all of them. But uh, Code and Game kind of gamifies it. You get experience, you level up. Anyway, I'm rambling here. Let, let's hop in. We're going to do this Ghost Leg one. Uh, well, we're gonna try to do ghost legs. I'm uh, no promises that we're gonna succeed at it, but I'm gonna walk you through my thought process, tell you how I would approach this, and then I'll go ahead and code a solution to it. Hopefully, a solution. I'm gonna try to code a solution. If it takes me too long, I'm gonna have to stop. But let's hop in. Uh, the first thing you need to do is just understand the problem statement on any anything like this. So let's read through it. Ghost legs is a kind of lottery game common in Asia. It starts with a number of vertical lines. Between the lines are random horizontal connectors binding all lines into a connected diagram like the one below. All right, so we got this A, B, C type thing. There's these lines that go down to one, two, three. And then there it looks like there's these connectors that go between them. Okay. so. Let's keep reading and see if we can figure out what this is talking about. To play the game, a player chooses a line in the top and follow it downward. All right, so we choose like A, B, C, I think. When a horizontal connector is encountered, they must follow the connector to turn to another vertical line and continue downwards. All right, so it sounds like if I was at A, I would come down, cross this line, and then keep going down. I would cross this line, keep going down, cross this line, keep going down, and I get to two. See if I'm correct, let's keep reading. Repeat this until reaching the bottom of the diagram. In the example above, when you start at A, you'll end up at two. All right, so A comes down, goes across, comes back down to two. If you get B, you'll end up at one. Yeah, B comes down, crosses over, comes down. Starting from C, you'll end up in three. Um, so C comes down, crosses once, comes back, goes down to three. All right, so you start at the bottom every time, sorry, you start at the top, you pick a letter, or you pick a something at the top, I'm assuming that it won't always be a letter in the programming case, but you pick a letter, follow the line down, when you reach a connector, you switch over, and you keep going until you get to the bottom. The example diagram, Starting to, all right, we read that. It is guaranteed that every top level will map to a unique bottom. Ah, that's an interesting thing to note here that you won't have like A and B both going to two. Every single line at the, every single symbol at the top has a unique outcome at the bottom. So one to one. Given a ghost leg diagram, find out which top label is connected to which bottom label and then list all connected pairs. Okay, let's see here. So that's the problem description. Now let's look at the you know more technical input. Code and game puzzles, the classic puzzles, have input output. So you're gonna get a bunch of test cases where you get some input and there's a specific output that you're expected to write to the console. So let's see. First line is gonna be a W and H uh, width and height of the diagram. And then there's gonna be H lines, so that makes sense because we're gonna read in a diagram. 
containing the diagram as your input. So we're gonna have to write a program that sort of reads through this input, parses it, and puts it in some kind of data structure that we can use to make sense. The diagram itself is composed of characters, vertical bar um, and dash and space. The top line of the diagram, diagram has a number of labels T. The bottom line contains labels B. All right, so they're referring to these labels at the top as T, A, B, C would be part of the set T. And then these symbols at the bottom would be part of the set B. Each T and B is a single visible ASCII character. It can be of any random value. Okay, so it's not guaranteed that you'll always have letters and numbers at the bottom. Um, you could have numbers at the top and letters at the bottom. You could have, say, an ASCII symbol. You could have some strange character. It could be like a period. I think we might be able to assume that they're not vertical bars and dashes, but it doesn't say that yet. Let's keep reading. The rule of game, the rule of the game, left and right horizontal connectors will never appear at the same point. As a rule, left and right horizontal connectors will never appear at the same point. Gotcha. Okay, so you'll never have a line that crosses more than one bar. So you'll always have in a single row, in a single row, Well, I'm not 100% sure. It sounds like they're saying in a single row, you'll never have more than one bar. At the very least, we know that you won't have a bar <clears throat> that crosses from A to B and then from B to C at the same point. I'm pretty sure for that case, all diagrams are having the same style as the test cases. Um, so I think it's just saying all diagrams have same style as the test case. I'm not quite sure I understand that, but I think it's saying that it follows this format. All right, so this is what we're gonna be receiving as input and then as our output, list all connected pairs between top and bottom labels, T to B, in the order of the top labels appear from left to right, write each pair in the separate line. Okay, so starting with the leftmost label, we're gonna, you'll have a symbol whatever the leftmost label is, that'll be the first character that you have to output, followed by whichever symbol in the bottom row it gets to, okay? In that order, and then you'll go to the next one, to ne you'll move right, and then you'll move right one more. And there's each appear on their own lines. Constraints, um, you'll never have a width that's, uh, your width will be f at least four, <clears throat> and at most 100 for both your width and your height. ASCII character used in the top and bottom labels are ranging from hex 21 to 7E. Okay, so there is a limit on what symbols we'll see in the top and bottom, but it's 21 to 7E. It can be a lot of weird stuff in that case. Letters, numbers, I believe there's periods, commas, semicolons. I think most of the keys on your keyboard or, or fair game in that range. We don't, I don't think we have to worry too much about that, but <clears throat> let's, uh, let's hop in. So let me think about what my strategy is gonna be. I need to start at the top. So I'm gonna have to build up a set of my labels. So there's a couple ways I could approach this. I am going to use, I think, Probably just an array to keep track of these. I could get clever, not clever, but I could get, I could use a dictionary um, or in Java, it would be a hash map. I'm in C sharps, so they're called dictionaries where I just sort of have like labels to outcomes. Um, when I read in my first line, I'm, I'm gonna have to keep, have all of my labels in a list or an array. I'm gonna go ahead and use an array. I know it's gonna be, a character so I'm gonna create an array like this um, and I do I know how I know the width um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna use a list so I don't have to worry about the size ahead of time I'm gonna do a list of characters um, top labels create a list like this 
Okay, the very first line, um, it starts out reading my W and my H in, and then my very first line is gonna have all of my labels going across the top. So I'm gonna do, to get those labels out, I'm just gonna do a split on that first line. So I'm gonna do console.readline.split. This will give me actually an array of strings. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna just have all of my symbols in it. Let me, let me print out that array string symbols. Um, oh, I don't think C sharp has a nice, if I do console.air.writeline, if I do symbols, I think it's just gonna say array. Well, let's test, let's, let's run this. Test is gonna fail, but I'm just looking to try and get some, some output. Uh, yeah, so when I display my string array like that, it just shows me system.string array. It doesn't show me the contents of it. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick Google, see how do I nicely display a, an array, uh, C sharp array to string. There's probably a method called join, uh, which is pretty common in many programming languages. Yeah, string.join. We're going to put a comma between them, and then we put the name of the array we want to join. All right, so I'm going to do string.join. I'm going to separate it. So the first thing is our separate. I'm going to put a comma. I'm going to say put commas between everything, comma and a space. Ooh, fancy on my symbols just to make sure i want to make sure that the array i'm getting back makes sense to me ah so i have all these blank spaces in there so when i do a default split since there's let's look at this input real quick notice our bar that separates things is two dashes our sort of like move over line is two dashes, so we have two spaces. So when call split, it's, it, it's leaving some blank spaces in there. So there's a couple things we could do to, 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 to fix this. I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy. So I can do, in C sharp, I can do a where. We need to filter out those values. So you could write a loop that says whenever I have some a string that's the empty string, just drop it out. That's essentially what this where clause is doing. I'm gonna say where um, my, my S, I'm gonna say my S is, I'm, I want to keep things where S is not equal to the empty string. And then I'll turn this back into an array here. So let me, can I shrink? Uh, I can make this full screen here, just so we can get a better view of it. All right, so long line here. We're doing a lot of chaining. We're doing the read line. We split it, this breaks it up based on spaces. And then I say, oh, keep, where is a filter? It's saying S happens to be the element that we're looking at for each one. We're saying if S is not the empty string we're gonna keep it all right let's see how we did let's run this test case again i want to end up with just a comma b comma c all right beautiful those are my symbols those are my inputs okay next so now i have my top symbols in my first line this one here my eye this is gonna crash maybe no no well i is less than well, this is interesting. I'm, sure, I'm surprised I can continue reading these things. So I'm gonna put a little comment. Get top labels. Okay. Eventually I'm gonna need to get my bottom labels, but what's really important, do I really need to keep track of these vertical bars going down? So these, these vertical bars going down, I don't really care about those. What I, what I actually care about is their connection and the order of the connections between the vertical bars. So I'm more interested in, as I'm following a line, 
where do I cross? At what points do I cross? I know that from top to bottom, that all of my, my, my essentially pipes coming down are the same height. So I think the data structure I'm thinking of using or the, the, the plan I'm thinking of doing is, is having some kind of Boolean array um, that tells me given if I'm on A and I'm at position zero, so we'll call this position here zero, should I switch? Should I move right? Should I move left? When I'm at position two, oops, when I'm at position two, or I'm gonna probably call this position one, I'm on A and I'm at position one, so I'm in column one at position, sorry, column zero. This A here, I'll call this column zero. If I'm at column zero and I'm at row zero, where should I be on my next, when, when I move down? In this case, it would be going from zero, zero to zero, one. If I'm at zero, one, I want to go to one. So I'm gonna move over and down, so I should go to two, one. So I shift over to the right. So I sort of wanna create this mapping that says given a position, given a position, where do I move to next? So like you can think of it as like a ball dropping down. It says, okay, if I'm at position zero, zero, my next position will be zero, one. When I'm at zero, one, my next position should be, I'm always gonna go down, it always increases by one. My next position is going to be over here too. So it's a, well, I actually know since it's always going down one, I can actually ask, I can, or I can reframe it a little bit differently. If I'm at position zero, 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 I should end up in column zero again. If I am at column zero, position one, I should end up in column two. All right, so that's sort of the mapping I'm gonna do. So to do this, I'm actually gonna have it be, to keep track of it, I'm gonna have it be an int array. So the first index is gonna be the column that I'm in, the column I'm in. So if I'm at index zero, it means I'm in this A column. If I index one, I'm in this B column. Okay. And then the, the second index is gonna tell me what row I'm in. So if I'm at zero, I'm in this top row. If I'm at one, I'm in the second row. If I'm at two, I'm in this third row. And then the value that's gonna be stored in is which column I will be in after, after I've evaluated that position. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. All right, so um, I'm gonna call this position map. Okay, so it's sort of uh, a position that maps over to an int, which will be my new column. Okay, um, and the size of this is gonna be my the number of labels I have. Okay, so that's the number of columns I have. Uh, let's go ahead and go here. So this will be new int. The number of columns I have is gonna be, oh, I need to actually put these in here. Hang on, I didn't actually finish my symbols. I can actually probably keep this here, symbols. Um, I'm gonna rename this, they're a nice rename. Ooh, look at that, uh, top labels. So I'm gonna go with top labels dot length. So that's my, the number of columns I have. All right. And then I need to specify the number of um, rows I have. And so that's gonna be my height. All right, so my H minus uh, one, two. I'm gonna subtract out the top row and the bottom row of my diagram because I don't care about these labels and I don't care about these labels. Let's do my H minus two. Beautiful. Let's see. Can I not specify that? Valid rank specifier. Oh, I think. 
Uh, I'd have to init uh, ah, ah, so in C sharp, I want to do this like that. I'm going to do a comma there to say, I want this to be a, a, a rectangular grid. If I did it the other way, it ends up being called a jagged array. And so I'm going to have here where I'm saying I have this many rows. Sorry, in this case, I'm doing this many columns, this many rows. Um, is that how I want to think about it? I think I prefer to think about it row column. So I'm going to do H minus two comma the column. So this is which row we're in. Sorry, I keep switching up the row we're in. The first index is our row. The second index is our column. And the value stored in is going to be the column we, we check in the, in the next spot. OK. Now, as we loop through our, our strings here, we can we need to detect if if which which row for each row so here i'm going to change this to r so this is the row we're looking at i'm going to change it to r we're actually looking at each row so this r represents the index of the row my first index here okay and then we need to sort of like go through and say okay well where are my pipes okay so the way it's set up is we have vertical bar and then we're gonna have space spaces or dashes so we sort of need to look at whether or not we have spaces or dashes and so I need to loop through this row I'm gonna call this row okay so we're gonna say four um, column wise int c equals zero and c is going to be less than um, top labels dot length and then c plus plus so we have to go through each column all right and i care about what i see in the index right next to that. So we're starting at C equals zero. So I can say row at C, but that's actually going to give me this symbol. So we always know that should be a vertical bar. So I'm going to actually say C plus one. All right. So if row at C plus one is equal to a space. All right. So if I see a space, wants me to do a character here C sharp uh, single quotes for characters in C sharp so we're not dealing with a, a string anymore we're dealing with a single character if I see a space that means that in my position map my row column goes to the same column all right so if I find that I'm not, that there's no bar next to me. Oh, this is interesting. Because sometimes I might have a bar to the left of me. All right, so if my position C plus one is equal to space and my C minus one, essentially, and row at C minus one, if there's no bar to the left or right of me, then I go down. Okay. So this is um, a little tricky because what do I do in my rightmost and my leftmost section? So my, my, my condition here is getting a little bit more complex. All right. So I need to ask the question, I might write a, a method here to help me. So I kind of want to say left, uh, if I have something, if there's nothing on my left, nothing on my right, bool, nothing left is equal to row C plus one equals a space. I could write this as one big thing, but I also, if there's nothing to my left, if, C 
is equal to zero or so if c is zero so if i'm in my first column there's nothing to my left all right bool nothing right if c is equal to top labels dot length minus one or row c minus one equals blank um what am i got doing wrong here double equals okay so if i'm in my left most row there's nothing to my left in my right most row there's nothing to my right and we have these conditions here so now i can say if there's nothing left and there's nothing right then i just go down i stay in that i stay in that column okay and then i'm gonna say continue go to the next continue says can go to the next iteration of the loop so i'm gonna set that and then i'm gonna continue all right if um if if i have if nothing left all right so let's think about this real quick i want to say if there's something to my left something to my right at this point i know that if i use nothing left if this was false all right so if there was nothing to if there let's think about it. nothing left and nothing right implies that there's nothing on either side if this expression if this boolean expression is false that means i have something left or something right so i don't necessarily need to come up with another condition that says something left something right instead i can say nothing left if there's nothing left that tells me that there's something to my right so my that tells me i need to move to my my the column to my right so we'll do c plus one okay position map and then i'll continue finally if i make it here there is something to my left because i know there's something on one side of me but if i eliminate this condition i know that there wasn't something on my right so now i know there's something on my left so i can do position map r c equals c minus one i think my logic here is making some sense and i could also a little something a little bit you could do if these continues bother you you there's plenty of ways to do this we could do something like int next position yeah i'll do a little refactor equals c we're going to assume we're not next position equals c then i'll have some little check and then my position map i'm gonna just do next position all right oh no i hate this all right i'm, I'm gonna leave it this way we might refactor at the end but i could i could do else if rather than having this continue here and then finally else like this so if you don't like the continues that's fine can do it this way as well clean up that code a little bit all right trying to all right let's stay focused i'm getting distracted here my curly brace are getting out of control all right so now i'm building up my map to go down it's not quite going to work i'm going to end up with some index out of bounds because of um this road check here isn't isn't quite right it really only works for my first my first index so i need to have a a translation that goes from column from a column to the index uh within the string where that thing is so i'm going to write a little function here that will translate that for me so public static int um, get column index int c so given let me call this column to string index okay so given given a c so the, the problem that I'm, i was running into here is that my c is going to be zero here one here 
two here, but in the actual index of my string, it's zero, uh, zero, one, two, three, three. So when my index is, is one, I should go to three. And when my index is two, I need to go to six, right? So if I have a C coming in, the translation to where it is in the string is a little di bit different. So let's see if we can figure out what that, uh, what that function sort of is. So if the index is zero, I can return zero. So you might think I just do C is zero. So if I get zero, I'm gonna return that. If I get one, I need to be three. Can I just multiply by three? Uh, because that'd be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I can just multiply by three, which is kind of nice. Maybe I didn't need a whole function for it, for it, but this could be, See, I thought I was gonna have to do something a little trickier than that. Worked out for me, I think. All right, so um, I'm gonna create an int. I'm gonna call it string ix. Six is equal to column to an autocomplete string index c. All right, and then I'm gonna replace this i with six because we need to check inside the string. All right. Not seeing anything super wrong with that right now. Let me run what we have so far to see if I get some index out of bounds. I think there's gonna be some weirdness here. So I can't, because I need at the end to loop through my bottom. My, my last string at the bottom is gonna be my bottom label, so I can't loop through everything. Row is equal to zero. Row H minus two i think because i need to remove the top and bottom um i think that's right h minus two and then let's let's see if the program crashes i'll hit run here program crashed index out of bounds all right so i have something wrong if i kept going i'd be really sad later so i need to figure out what's going on here index was outside of the bounds of the array um on line 33. Okay. Row SIX. Ah, ah, if. Hang on. If this is plus, plus one. This one's to the left. This one needs to be minus one. So I need minus one here, plus one here. Let's try that. Okay, so I don't crash. Doesn't mean my program's right. It just means I managed to sort of loop through a bunch of lines here and then loop through my, my row uh, and hopefully build this thing up a little bit. Let me, let me try and verify. It's always good to verify what you're doing. So let's do a little bit of something here to try and verify this. So four, we're gonna loop through position map, see if it gives us some sanity checks here. So four uh, int r equals, so we're just real quick, real quick check. It's gonna take me forever to write this. I always say quick. Uh, I'm gonna write a function called print um, table, and we're gonna make it take in a position map. So we have an int array with columns here, uh, uh, table. Okay, and I just want it to print out all of the integers that are inside this table. So we're gonna do four int row equals zero, row is less than table dot um, get length of the first dimension r plus plus for int c equals zero c less than table dot get length someone in the comments is yelling at me right now telling me that there that i didn't do a semicolon here and that there's probably some sort of join that i can do that will do ooh, ooh, i can just do join on every row oh oh talking myself and i was gonna loop through everything but now i can just do a join on the row so console that right line. Thanks, brain, for remembering join. Uh, we're gonna join 
uh, we'll see if this works. I'm gonna just put uh, a space between everything. Can I do, um, put table here, is it? Uh, there's no, it's not gonna be quite what I want. I want table on just like a first index. Can I do that? No, no. Uh, what does this do though? Console and for debugging, I want to do error dot line. On coding game, if you do error, it doesn't actually go to your output, so you can use it as um, sort of print line debugging. I don't think they have a debugger built into their website. That'd be cool. Let's check this out. I'm gonna join. Uh, after I've built this thing, I'm gonna call print table, and the table I want to print happens to be position map. And let's play this one. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was very hopeful of me uh, to be able to do that. All right. If I did a jagged array, this would be much, a little bit simpler. Um, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going like this. Um, under, hmm. Let me look at what methods I have. Get, can I take, uh, it's too bad. Let's see, C sharp, um, multi-dimensional array to jagged array. Is that what I want? Does this make things easier? Is there an easier, no, there's not any way. They have this big <laughs> loop, okay. I was hoping there'd be some nice, uh, some nice way to do it. Okay, there's not a super nice way to do it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do the, what I, I'm gonna call it garbage way, but the hard way. We're gonna do it the hard way where we write a nested loop that goes through everything. Um, and then we'll do a console.write on table of row and column. And then I'll put a space between them. And then after each row, I'll do a right line. Okay. I should have just done this. Look at how much time I wasted doing that. Um, although learning tricks in C sharp, learning tricks in whatever programming language you happen to be using can be super helpful. Um, it would have been nice to know that it would be really nice if there was a something I could do that just print this out real easy. All right, let's, let's see what we get. All right, so just to verify here, I have, we should say in zero, we should go to one, zero, zero, zero. Yes, okay. So that looks correct. One, zero, this goes to two, this goes to two, this goes to one. Yeah, so we stay in one. And then this one stays in two, stays in two, this goes to one, goes to one, goes to two. All right, so I think I have just because I printed out and it works on this one case doesn't mean it's perfect, but it gives me confidence. That's one of the things here. It gives me confidence that my code is going to work. So now I'm just gonna comment that out. I'm gonna comment out this right line as well. And I'm gonna keep going. Um, so this builds up my position map. My code's getting a little gnarly here. So I might, you know, something to, to try and make my life either. I might, might do something like public. Um, static uh, int build table like this. I might move this code here. All right. Just to make my code a little bit more readable, I'm gonna do this. Oh, the way these are set up is a little bit gnarly. So I need to get my int h and um, int uh, string array top labels. All right, so maybe not the best way, but now I can like logically look at this and I'm gonna say here that I have an int array positions equals build table. And I'm gonna pass in H and top labels, okay. So at least my main method, I can look at and be like, okay, what are the steps? What am I doing here? So first thing I do, I get my top labels. Then I build my table. Now that I have my table, 
the the last line is going to be my bottom label so i can do string and i can take this here bottom labels take that whole thing here so let's let's look at it i'm going to read in that last line i'm going to split it and i'm only going to keep non-empty strings and these two things should if all of the inputs are correct if there are no broken inputs um let's just take another look at string.join um bottom labels here all right let us just verify that my bottom labels are one two three one two three i'm feeling i'm feeling pretty good so i have my top labels on my bottom labels now for every top label all right so now i need to loop through and figure out what where i am on my bottom so so for int um l for label or i'm gonna do ix for which index i'm doing i start at the the first index index is less than top labels dot length ix plus plus i'm gonna console dot write top labels of that index so i'm gonna write the top label i'm starting at i'm gonna say position is equal to ix so the position uh, i'm in happens to be the column in and then i just need to sort of go down uh every row in my in my um positions all right so i'm gonna say for int r equals zero because we always start at the top uh r is less than positions dot get length of that first so the number of rows we are r plus plus and then we're just sort of going to say that my position is equal to my positions of where i am so which column i'm currently in well i'm doing row column row position so let's let's think about this this was the whole getting this positions table set up was so i could could write this code much easier here so i'm gonna say for every label start at the label and just figure out where your next row we always increase our row by one we always go down and then based on where we are it tells us whether or not we which which column we move to next okay and then once we get through this loop we can write bottom labels at position so now we know when we get to the bottom we find whichever whichever column we're in we say okay well what's the symbol for that one let's see fingers crossed here i always am a little sweaty here uh when we get to that um a2 someone's a2 b1 c3 okay and i output answer it's saying found answer expected nothing oh okay i just had this extra thing here um it wasn't expecting me to print anything extra there all right so let's film pretty good about this that first one's good. Let's run all of our test cases. See how we did. So what? So so. All right. Well, these are running. Well, ho hopefully none of them go wrong. But the thing that's really interesting here is, and I hope you see this at the end of the day. If you have a a data structure that matches your problem the actual computation shouldn't be should should be should try to keep it as simple as possible. So the actual output at the end should try and be as simple as possible. So the hardest part about this problem, in my opinion, the, the challenge was how am I going to store this data? How am I going to store this data to make my life easier? How am I going to manage that complexity to make things easier for me? And so the the bulk of this specific problem was how do I build this table? How do I parse this information and build this table up? Great, great little puzzle here. I really enjoyed this. This was fun. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and submit. So one of the cool things about Code in Game is once you've submitted, I love this puzzle. I'm gonna go with loved it. You did practice loop conditions and ASCII art. One of the things I really like about Code in Game is once you've submitted your solution for a specific programming language, you can go browse and vote on other people's solutions. So, well, the first they tell you like, how do you feel about the different solutions? So I have to, I have to read through these real quick. So solution one, this is a solution someone submitted. Um, labels equals console at readline. All right. Lists enumerable dot range. So this person's using some some fancier techniques than I did. I was trying to. Well, I'm not the I'm not an expert C sharp programmer in my opinion. I've only been programming in C sharp for about two years. But there's some really cool things you can do like this to reduce the amount of code you have. Uh, enumerable dot range of W. The W is the width got to array. Okay, so they sort of made this array here that they're gonna enumerate through. They read through these, do something similar like if the line has a dash in it, then we go left or right. So they build this up and then they sort of do something similar. We did, is that true? The last line, they read the last line. Yep, so they build up their, their sort of matrix then and then they print it out. So they, theirs is a little bit more concise than mine. I don't necessarily think it is incredibly readable, um, but they're they're essentially doing what we did. We build up, they're solving it as they go, rather than building up their data structure and then solving it, they're sort of solving it as they go. This is a, a fine approach. Let's see, solution two. Let's look here, solution two. These are all the same things. I table letter, I table root, or int i, i is less than w. They're coming in here, getting up the letters, temp, root temp. So they're saying, that, so they're sort of like saying, okay, this is the, the default root. And then they're gonna use that to replace the root is what it looks like. So now they loop through it. Uh, each CPT is just like a, an in index keeping track of it. Um, copy that route over. Okay, so they're going through getting that route. Then they're gonna loop through this nested loop period. So they're reading each line and they're updating the route as they go. Okay, similar to what we did. And then at the end, they just output their roots, the, the letter and then the output. I think this one's a little bit harder to read, a little harder to understand. So I actually think I prefer solution one here. I'm gonna select solution one, vote on it. And then uh, normally I'd wanna do all these, but I wanna show you all the uh, best solution. So we're going to skip the review. All right. I feel a little bit bad about that. Skip the review. I'll go ahead and publish mine. Um, if someone wants to read it, give me some critiques. That's fine. So the top, the top rated with 26 pluses is Chuck Zelvers. And oh, is this, this is essentially what we were looking at just a moment ago. They loop through and then they sort of like update their map of positions at the end for each label they write it out here all right so nice and concise i personally prefer code that's broken out into methods so you can kind of understand what's going on a little bit better um, but some good solutions all right so i hope you found this video useful i enjoyed doing this puzzle i hope you gain something from it. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and come back anytime. Have a beautiful day.